Hello everyone, Nigel here with you, Nigel's Modeling Bench. Another review coming your way, but with a little bit of a difference. Um, today we're going to be looking at two kits. We're going to compare two kits. And as you've seen by the title, they one is right at the bottom end of the range of cost, and one is up there at the top of the range of cost, or well, getting up there anyway. And uh, But the difference is, they're both kits of basically the same subject and in the same scale. So it's not often you can do a comparison like this when one of the kits is roughly 30 quid and the other one is about 200, as I said in the title. So we're looking at the 130 second scale Mosquito and obviously the daddy of the bunch, the Rolls Royce in 130 second scale Mosquitoes is this one. This is the Tamiya kit. I have this one and I have started it. I've built the wings and engines in that first. I have shown it in videos before. I'll show you again in a minute. But that's basically like I said, 195 on Amazon, 208, I think, at e-models, 220 um, at, um, at Haddon. So you'll probably get it for 170 or something on eBay. But it's up there. It's an expensive kit. OK, um, but if you want to build a 30 second scale Mosquito and you don't really care if it's a glass nose bomber or what it is, then you could always get this. And this currently is on Amazon for $29.95. I think I paid $25.95 for this one. And they do tend to vary in price. It's an old kit, but, you know, it's it's a 30 second scale Mosquito. And at the end of the day, if you want a 30 second scale mos Mosquito to put on your shelf, um, to have in the background of your videos or just to look at across the room, then really, what's the difference? I mean... I'm guessing the Tamiya kit is going to have far more internal detail, detailed engines and everything, and the detail that's there will be better. I'm sure the Tamiya will have a far better detailed cockpit, better undercarriage, you know, and I'm sure the Tamiya will be probably 99.9% .9 accurate in shape and form and everything, and this one probably isn't. In the middle of these, you've got the Hong Kong models kit, uh, which is 179, 180 quid. On, uh, on Amazon at the moment. You can get the Mark VI bomber in in uh, HK models and you can get a Mark IX, I think. But if you want a fighter bomber, the Tammy one is to go for. If you just want a bomber, just get this, you know. Um, I hear the HK models has got uh, shape issues, although I'm not sure, but I'm not involved in that in this one because I don't have one and I never will. I don't want one, thank you very much. So, um, Without further ado, I think we should get to the bench, have a look and sort of we, we could look at the instructions first of all and do a comparison. So for those of you that haven't seen the, the big Tamiya or indeed the little Ravel, then we can do a comparison and, and see what you think is the best value for money. OK, so here we are at the bench and I've got the instructions of these two kits. Now, the Tamiya kit is part number uh 60326 if you want to do a search for it 30 second scale um mosquito fb fighter bomber mark six and then the revel kit is part number 04758 and that's the 30 second scale kit mark four um made in poland uh so 2014 kit this one i believe is actually earlier than that um i got a feeling this kit could well be earlier but uh basically if you get the revel kit you get these black and white instructions. There's no colour instructions or anything because it's an older model. And you've got your instructions going through with all your diagrams and everything. And then at the back, you've got two options for your colour schemes. You've got that one there from uh, Marham in England, 1942 from 105 Squadron. And you've got this one here from 627 Squadron in uh, Woodhull Spa, England, June 1944. And that is definitely the one to go for because it's got stripes and we love stripes, don't we? Well, I do anyway. So um, there we go. So quite simple. It's just, uh, what is it there? 10 pages and everything is all in one sort of black and white pamphlet. It's, it's, it's a bit like a book, I guess. It is actually staple, so therefore it is a book. Um, with the Tamiya kit, again, black and white sort of A4 size book this you can see it has 51 pages so five times more pages it doesn't have color call outs in it as far as i can see it has stencil call outs and everything and usually for a tamiya kit it has sprue call outs you don't generally get them 
Um, and you can see we also have some figures, both seated and climbing ladders and stuff. You get window masks, all sorts. And as you can see, going through the instructions, we've got some history about the aircraft there. We've got some health and safety. It's telling us what our paints are, telling us about the masks and everything. And then we're straight into building the cockpit. Alongside that, we get another colour book in here, which is all about the Mosquito, um, which is very, very nice indeed. You've got some great shots there. Be careful, it's restored aircraft. Always be careful of restored aircraft. But some very nice stuff in there. And we've got some information about the history of the airplanes, the difference of the different marks and everything. And you can see here how the variants came along. So... Uh, very, very nice to see and read, and it's all in Japanese and in English, so uh, very nice indeed. And they're talking there about how it was built. You can see it's one of the only aircraft that was actually built, like we build our plastic models. It was built as a fuselage half, and then the two were glued together. And I remember these were all wood, so that's another good thing about cheap and expensive. Normally one of the big things is surface detail, you know, raised panel lines, raised rivets, whatever. I'm not talking modern raised rivets, I'm talking old school raised rivets. Whereas with a mosquito, it doesn't really matter because there are really not many rivets. There's a few panels, but nothing much. And then with the Tamiya, again, you get this beautiful colour call out with your guide for um, for colour painting and everything. And this is the um, 487 Squadron in February 44, Operation Jericho. Again, no stripes, but this is just one of the options you get in the kit. I think there are three options. Moving along from that, if we look at decals, we'll have a good look at the instructions in a minute. If we look at decals, we can see that with the Ravel kit, you're getting your two options here. You're getting your um, instrument panel there, and you've got your roundels and everything here, separate red centres, and you've got some stencils down there as well, which is really nice. And these have a Z or a Z at the end there, which means they're made by Zeus. Zimmerman or something, I can't remember the company now, but they're not cartographed, but they're nearly as good. So, um, big decal there with a lot of carrier film in it, so you have to be a bit careful with that one. On the whole, pretty basic decal sheet for a 30 second scale kit, but very nice decals at the end of the day. With the Tamiya kit, we get uh, three, I think, is it three? Yes, three decal sheets, or is it two with stickers? Um, we've got, oh that's masks, so you've got window masks in there which you don't get with the Revell kit and you've got uh, a sheet of stencils and stuff there and you can see there's some stencils and everything which are all very nice indeed. We've got some silver panels there for the exhaust and then you've got all your um, dihedral incidents, lines and everything and all your stenciling and placards and all that on there which is all very nice indeed and then we have our instructions, our instructions, our main decals here. So we've got the the uh, three different versions there that we can build. There's a Polish Polish flag there. We've got some more stencils there. there again, massive carrier film on those keep out ones, and we've got the propeller tips as well, which I don't know why they bother with. I mean, it's crazy. There is a big caveat to this though. These are Tamiya decals, and as we all know, they're not very nice. They're very thick. They don't go down very well. Um, the carrier film's quite thick, so if you haven't got a perfect finish under there, you're going to get silver in. Uh, so, you know, there we go. We've got lovely decals, but I'll be quite honest with you. <laughs> I would prefer to use the kit, the decals out of the Revell kit than I would those, because Tamiya decals are, as we all know, especially if you've got some of the older car kits, they're just really not very nice. So the, if you're going to buy it, the Tamiya kit, the one thing I would get aftermarket for it is some decals because, or even better still, get the one man army um, masking set and you'll get all your roundels, all your different options and all your stencils and you'll be able to paint them rather than have any worries at all. I've actually got from mine the HGW uh, stencil decals here somewhere. Um, I can't think where they are, I can't see where they are now. Uh, but they're no longer available apparently so um so there we go so that's the decals and everything looked at so if we have a quick look through the instructions the revel kit as i say quite basic you've got a sprue call out there you can see there's not a lot to it one of the biggest issues with revel they have no sprue letters or anything and also their parts don't seem to follow a pattern it's not like one two three four five six seven eight like most other kits 
they're all over the place. You can see one, two, three. Where's three? Where's three? There's three, and then there's four and five, and where's six? Six, I can't see six. Six is probably on another spruce somewhere. You know, and you've got to try, there's six over there, look, and then you've got sevens here and eights there. Uh, where's nine? Where's nine? And, and this is the problem with Revell. With these older Revell kits, you're looking forever. If you've got a kit with a kit with a lot of sprues, <laughs> you're going to be forever looking for parts because they don't have a letter. Whereas with your Tamiya kit, like you see back here, and usually you've got sprue callouts, you've got, this is K, and you've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. You can see it's all laid out. You've got the K sprue, so the instructions are called for K7, and you'll pick up your K sprue, and you go, oh, there's seven there, straight away. Whereas with the Revell kit, you're hunting around. So we're starting off on the Revell kit with the cockpit, which is all looking pretty basic, although we have got rudder pedals. We've got um, a decal for the instrument panel, so that's all fine if that's good enough for you. Um, and then we've got the um, the instrument panel with rudder pedals going on the floor. We have seat belts molded onto seats, which I'm absolutely fine with as long as they're not too bad. They don't look very nice, to be honest. And then we've got the seat backs going in and the main pilot seat, which looks horrible. And then we've got the pilots. Uh, we've got the pilot and navigator going together there in two halves. And then they're putting the pilot's control column in in there and his, uh, I'm guessing his hand's going to go on there or is no his hand's just sitting on his lap by the look of it and then over here we're building up the tail wheel putting onto tail wheel bulkhead we're putting in the panel that goes in behind the uh, navigator and pilot there we're adding the glazing in the side and then we're going to get our fuselage halves together tape it together and put our wheel halves together put the tail cone on there add our landing light into the wing add the radiator grill in put the wings together Add the wings to the fuselage, build up our fin tail planes, add those. And look, we do have engines, but they're very, very simple. And the engines are going together there, sitting in the cells, putting the cells together, building up the undercarriage around the wheels. You've got some sort of detail there in the undercarriage bay. Putting the cells onto the wings, putting on the side panels with the exhaust shrouds. And then we're adding in the spindles for the propellers. And then again here, and then we're going to add the wing onto the wings. So we're going to cover up the engines with the uh, with the um, engine covers. But I'm guessing we could leave the sides unglued if you want to. Is there an option to glue them? Yes, you've got an option to glue them or not glue them there. Look. So that's all good. And then we're going to add our doors. So we've got the choice of having the gear down or having the gear up, which is a nice touch. Don't know how well the doors will fit if you have the gear up. And then we're adding our um, props and our spinners onto the fronts there, painting the props and spinners, adding a canopy which comes in two halves, which is a bit weird, but at least you get some nice moulding on the teardrops on the sides. Uh, and then you've got the access panel going in the top, or the emergency panel. And then it's telling us to put an antenna down in there, and then we've got the rigging going in there. So add some string, and uh, that's going to give you your rigging for your antenna. Got the two options there. Um, painted in that's going to be grey green on the top grey on the bottom uh, with your lovely stripes on there and then you've got this one here which is again ABC yeah, grey green on the top grey on the bottom but without any stripes so um, all in all a very very simple little kit as I say at the end of the day it's going to be a fairly decent size mosquito to put on your display shelf so very nice now the Tamiya kit is a whole other story History in the front of here, all about the uh, Rocky Road to production. It says you're a versatile customer, all very good stuff. We've got all the different languages in there. Hints and tips about painting, all the paints required. And then going over the page here, how to use your window masks, some hints and tips on better, making better models. You've got your three options there. Suggested tools, what your icons are, all your different paints. So there we go. And remember, this is all a bit out of date now because since all this has been done, We've got the Tamiya LP paints, which are much nicer than the X and S, XF range. So here you can see, going into the cockpit, we have a very nice the uh, detailed pilot seat going together. And that's going to go onto that bulkhead there. We've got some flares and everything going down in here. We've got some uh, beautiful detail going on with all the colour bits and pieces. We've also got some photo etch panels going in there. We've got photo etch belts. Now I'm assuming... Yeah, so you're going to add these belts, but you're going to not do it if you're going to add your figures. I've actually stolen these belts to use in my Hurricane. So if you saw that part one of my Revell Hurricane, I stole the belts from this kit to use in that one. So there we go. Um, 
So there we are building up now. This is the, uh, what's this here? This is more cockpit parts going in. And then we've got that panel going in the side there, which I'm assuming is like a radio. And then we've got more bits and pieces going here in the floor. And then we're building up the navigator's seat there again with harnesses. You can add the harness if you're putting the figure in or add this harness if you're not. So you've got your different harnesses for with and without the figure. And as you can see, a lot more detail going into this cockpit than you had in the Ravel. Adding in the rudder pedals there. And then building up the instrument panel, you've got lovely decals which are printed in reverse to go in the back of there to build up that instrument panel, which is all very, very nice. Now, I'm very fortunate in that I've got the, um, for the, I've got the Red Fox instrument panel set for this one, which is for a Mark VI. I've also got the Edward Big Ed set, and I've also got the Tamiya kit parts. So when I do my Revell kit, I can probably update it. Even though it won't be strictly accurate, I'm, I'm guessing a Mark VI and a Mark IV will have a different instrument panel, but it's going to look a lot nicer than the panel you're getting in the Mark, um, in the Mark IV with the Revell kit. You've got the control column going in there, building up some more information on that bulkhead. You've got the, um, the yellow circles going on there. All going together, and then we've got the guns going together. There is an issue with these. Now, I'll, I'll cover this because everybody thinks Tamiya is, is everything. These gun tracks are lovely, but they have no bullets in them. They're, they're, they're molded like empty. So, again, you can buy resin upgrades for that, which I've done. All the detail going into the side panels here in your cockpit, which is very, very nice indeed. Really, really lovely. And then all this detail going in here, that's, that's going to go in behind the cockpit, I believe. Yes, it's going in there, look, behind the cockpit. So all very nicely done. So you can have the option with the bomb doors, you can have them closed. You can have half of the bomb bay um, with, a, with bombs and have half with the fuel tanks or you can have half with bombs and have the guns in there. So you've, you've got a lot of options. Sorry, that's half closed. Sorry, half closed like that. OK, or half closed or, or fully open, exposing all your guns and everything going in underneath. So you've got guns in the nose and you've got cannons underneath. Putting the fuselage sections together. This here leads us to think that they were going to bring out a Mark IV because you've got separate four and a half sections of the fuselage, but it never happened, well, as of yet, so we shall see. And then putting the fuselage halves together, adding on the nose, and then we're going to start building up the tailplane. Tailplane going in with the elevators and everything, tail wheel going in. Um, looking at the engines, typical sort of Tamiya engine build-up. We've got magnets in here, we've got... Um, the, the, the crankcase going together there, we've got cylinder heads and cylinder blocks, supercharger, blah, 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 all going together very, very nicely. And then we've got a jig to set our cylinder heads with, which is just, I mean, this kit is just so beautifully engineered, it's untrue. And then going over the page here, once again, this is another really interesting feature of this kit. If you're building it undercarriage down, which I don't think you have a choice of not doing, I'm not sure if they give you that option. Um... But basically, you can see here, they're telling you to leave this sprue attached. I mean, they just think of everything. Leave this sprue attached here, and then when you build your when you build your undercarriage up, you won't snap that bit off. Take note of this, this bit sticking down here. And you've got this pipework going in here, adding in the engines. You've got some brackets going on the back there. And then to avoid confusion, attach a tag to identify that this is the right side engine. So you don't get your engines mixed up, because there is a difference in the two. And then you're going to do the same over here with building up your left side engine. And then you've got your exhaust going in. You've got a choice of two exhausts. Adding on those exhausts. Adding on the oil tank onto the back behind the engine there. So that's going to be in your undercarriage bay. You can see this is just like the real thing. Adding lots of detail here for photo etch parts inside the main gear bay. And then you're going to sandwich that in, into the around the engine and everything. You've got your header tank going over there. And then the front plate going on. And then again, doing the same on the other side. Okay, adding the pipework in the bottom there. And then we've got these firewalls going in behind the engine. You can see all the throttle lever controls and everything going in there. Really is full of detail. Adding those panels here to this massive central wing spar. Adding in the sides of the gear doors and gear bays in there. Okay, adding those panels to the front. Drilling some holes in here. Adding in our radiators. We've got photo etch radiator panels going in. We're adding more radiators. I don't know why I've got these red lines on here. We'll have, we'll have a look in a minute. I've built it. It means I haven't added them, I'm guessing. Um, and then we've got our um, identification lights here, or navigation lights, should I say. 
fuel tanks going in, painting those, adding all the details and all the straps. I've put the Edward straps on mine and some different um, decals. Building up our undercarriage legs. Very interesting, you've got these wonderful wheels here, doing it in the shape that, that Tamiya did it with these separate panels going around the outside of the tyre, which is absolutely fantastic, unbelievably beautifully well done. And then you can see you've got this piece here, J48, goes into the leg, you don't glue it in. And then after those are all glued up and set and everything, then you can take that jig out and slide your undercarriage leg down over those two protruding rods, which are part of the engine, the main engine bulkhead and and everything. It's, it's just so well engineered, like I say. Then you've got the rear part of the undercarriage going together there with your mud guards and everything in, adding those in there. And then we've got brake lines. Yes, brake lines going in, all in the kit, no extra aftermarket needed, and you've got all the pipe work going in here. And then we're going to build up this panel here, which is going to sit in behind the pilot and the navigator. Got this photo etch part going in there and then building up a radio, radio gear. So this is a receiver, sorry, G receiver. And that's going to go in there behind with the 1154 transmitter, is it? Nope, that's the 1155. That's right, 1155 and then the 1154 going in behind there. So just like we got in our Lancaster. And then we've got a panel, we've got the wing going into the fuselage there with a screw and then a panel to cover the screw. That's your dinghy hatch. And they're telling us to remove certain bits and drill certain holes, whatever version you're doing, showing you how to get the wing to go up in, in there. Then we're going to start building up these guns, um, the cannons which are going to go underneath. So they're beautiful, got the cannons going underneath. One thing I will say, when we look at this, we sort of think to ourselves, oh, it's Tamiya, it's absolutely amazing, it's gorgeous. Where are we? I, I missed it out, didn't I? No, I did talk about that, didn't I? And we've got the, again, with the cannons, you've got the missing, you've got no shells in the gun tracks. So you want to get the aftermarket ones there as well with the shells in them. They look much better, but we have got all the cooling pipes and everything, which is really nice. And then we've got bombs going together there. So we've got bombs sitting on top or below the fuel tanks, but on top when it's upside down. Got your cannons going in there. You have the bomb bay doors open to show all that off. And it's going to look absolutely stunning up under there. So you've got the option of having the bomb doors closed, half open or fully open. And here's all your doors and all the different way you're going to go for it. So uh, as you can see, quite amazing. And then you've got the um, encasements there for your shell, shell cartridge evacuation chutes, which is all really, really nice. And then you've got the options closed, half closed and then open. OK, or half open and then fully open, which is obviously the way you're going to go if you're into your detail. And then here we're going to build up our flaps, got flap assemblies. You've got the choice of having them up or down, whichever parts you use. And then you can see them going in there. And we've got more flaps on the other side. And then we've got the engine nacelles being built up. You've got the side panels there. They're all going to be put, held on with magnets. So you can be removing them. And then we've got the um, exhaust shreds going on there. Again, they're held in with magnets, building up our props, adding the spinner onto the front. It's telling us not to use any um, cement because we have put a poly cap in there. I'm guessing we've got a poly cap in there or the, the spinner is just going to sit on there. So you can fit your spinner and not glue it, which is a really nice touch. So you can display your model with or without. I think what it is, you need to remove the spinner to get the, because I think the, um, the engine covers sort of clip in behind the spinner, just like they do on the Spitfire. So moving forward, getting the props in, as you can see, very, very busy build. We've got some wing mounted bombs. We've got some drop tanks. We've got bomb racks to go on the wings up here. And then we've got all our uh, shrouds to go around our guns and everything. And then we've got this interior canopy framing, which is beautiful, just like the Hong Kong, Hong Kong, the border models, Lancaster, sorry, border models. Um, it's got the internal framing there. And they've got more internal framing there and then the canopy's going over the top with all the masking on there. And then we're going to build up the fin and the rudder, add those in, add the canopy. We've got our entrance door there, so we have the option of having a ladder, having the door open. We can have the um, door closed if we want to. And then we've got figures standing there. And then we've got all our parts called out. And then our options here with our different, um, different markings. We've got the colour markings as well to go and here's all your stencil data but I really would recommend with this kit just do not use the Tamiya decals get the aftermarket set from one man army and you won't regret it um, or 
Indeed, you can get aftermarket um, stencil sets, but I really wouldn't use the Tamiya de decals because you do run the risk of ruining your model, I'm afraid. So with that done, let's have a look at the actual kits themselves. OK, so if we start with the Revell kit, which is uh, which is a bargain. Um, <laughs> well, it depends how good it is, really, doesn't it? So we can open up these bags and open up here in a strong sellotape. I know that has been on there for years. So <clears throat> we can take that out of there. I should imagine one of those spinners is probably broken because it's sticking out like that. If we've got the, we've probably got another sprue. Same, have we? Or have I got a sprue missing? We'll have a look in a minute. Um, so there we can see we've got uh, our our pilot and navigator figures. There's not a lot of flash on it, to be honest. The pilot seat isn't that bad. It's a bit chunky on the sides. For 30 second scale kit, it's not very nice, nice cockpit at all, but you know, you've got to remember how much it cost. And then we've got the engine there, we've got the supercharger there, we've got the front casing there, we've got some exhausts, which aren't very nice at all. Um, and then we've got the uh, shrouds that go over the exhaust, so it doesn't really matter if they're not very nice at all, because if they're covered in shrouds, then you're not going to see them. We've got undercarriage legs here, moulded in one, great big sink mark in the middle there on that one. But, um, you know, it's all there. It's it's fine. You've got our mud guards there with some ejector pin marks in the back of them. You've got some figures there, which if you use are not very nice at all. So that's one sprue. And then our second sprue here, we've got our propellers on, which don't look too bad at all. There's no real big sink. Oh, there is. There's a sink mark in the back of them there. Look. Um, there's also a little ejector pin mark in the back of them, but it's very, very shallow. And then we've got our gear doors there. We've got our um, tail planes by the look of it. So we've got the top, the bottoms and the tops there. So we've got riveted, um, riveted uh, aluminium elevators, which I'm not sure if it's correct or not. But again, you can see there's no panel detail on here because there is no panel detail. And then here we've got fabric for the rudder, which looks quite nice. Which looks quite nicely done on there. And then we've got our tail with there. It's an anti-shimmy wheel by the look of it. And then we've got our, our hubs there, which are going to go in behind our spinners. And we've got the G radio there, which is mega, mega detailed, as you can see. But um, I think really, if you've got the Tamiya kit and you've added a load of extras to it, then you could take the bits out of the Tamiya kit, put them in this, and probably end up with something half-decent cockpit-wise. So uh, there we go. And then we've got clear parts here, which I shall open and we'll have a look at. I do like these Revell sellotape bags because they're so easy to close back up again. It's um, got our clear parts there, which are actually, do you know what, they're not bad. Um, let's use my hand. You can see through there, it's uh, they're not bad. I mean, I've seen worse, although that's a bit gnarly there, isn't it? So yeah, I... I mm. Not the best, but uh, maybe with a dip or a polish or something, they'd be all right. But uh, all right, the nose glazing isn't so bad. So, so, I mean, it's not brilliant by today's standards, but you know, it's a thirty-pound kit, guys. So, is it good enough? It'd be great for um, you know, if there's somebody out there that wants to get into the larger scales and a little bit scared of. Because larger scale kits do tend to be quite expensive, let's face it. And you want to sort of have a 30 second scale mozzie to sit next to your 30 second scale Spitfire or whatever that you've done. You know, you could have a mozzie and a Spitfire on the shelf, both in 30 second scale for less than 50 quid. So <laughs> when you look at these older Revell kits, it's, um, it's quite nice really. And then we have here as a second, there's only two bags in this kit. We've got, this bag here has got obviously all our wings and bits and pieces in it. So we've got in here, we have the sprue here, we've got our wings, we've got some raised panel lines there. I believe this this here is all um, taped joints, I believe. But that's something you could look into. Got some detail there for the uh, for the undercarriage bay, you can see in there. And we've got these rivet fasteners around here and they're raised, which is probably quite accurate. Uh, we've got panels there, inspection panels. We've got the uh, there's the hole where the landing light's going to go in. That obviously pivots down. Um, 
But all in all, not too bad. We've got raised rivet detail on there, which you could redo if you wanted to, or just leave it raised. The wheels and tyres are bleh, they're not very nice at all. But uh, cover them in mud or something, they'd look alright, wouldn't they, I guess? I don't know. Um, and then we're here we have the fuselage halves. So definitely a Mark IV with the side window and the, the glazed nose. A little bit of sinkage in there we could deal with easily. Um, but you can see there where there's a shut line where they put different, they've got different moulds for doing different uh, designs. You can obviously cut the bomb bay doors open there. You can see the interior of the, it's cut away so you can cut through it. But I don't know if you have any bomb bay detail. I don't think you do. So uh, you might wish to have it or not. I don't know. There's a little tail cone there, which is nice. But uh, all in all, that big thick band there, which is your, your dope joint. Don't tape joint. So we've got some riveting down here. I'm not sure if that's correct or not. Maybe a panel that goes in. I can't remember. You've got riveting around the windows and stuff, but uh, it's, all, it's all there, isn't it? Engine nacelles. So we've only got one engine detail. You can only see one side of it by the look of it. So uh, there we go. So there's your engine bearer in there. Very, very simple representation. So that's that. And then now the other side, this is the other wing. Basically, same thing over again. Landing light going in there. We've got the uh, detail in there. And we've got our spinners here, which look very nice indeed. Very nicely shaped. No sink marks in them. They look very nice indeed, to be honest. Very nice. So they're actually nicer than the spinner that comes in that new Revell Hurricane kit. It's got a little bit of mould shrinkage and stuff on it, which needs sanding out, but not the end of the world. But, um, yeah. 1992, there we go. So it's a Revell monogram, 1992 kit made in USA. I doubt very much if this was made in the USA. But, um, so there we go. So that's the Revell kit, which is, uh, which is cool. I'm glad it's only got one engine because I noticed there I only had one engine, which is a bit worrying. Um, so we get these bags back in that box and then we can uh, put this to one side and we can have a look at the Tamiya kit, which I have, well, it's more than started, it's, it's half, it's more than half done. So I'll just go by the screw, screws that I've got them out. Here you can see we have some engine cowlings, okay, engine covers there. So they give you these in clear and I'm not sure if that's something they've always done or if it was just a, because sometimes they do that as a bonus for early on, early days. There we've got the side covers there, the engines. For some reason I've removed the, up, the up, upper covers, I don't know why. Um, so we've got the side covers there, you can see they're sort of semi-clear so you can have your engines exposed if you want to. Um, and then here we're into the grey sprues, so we can see here the kind of detail we're getting in this kit. There we've got the exhaust, you can see they're kind of moulded, so you've got detail, so you've, you've got a sort of something representing an open end. But as I say, they've got shrouds anyway, so it doesn't really matter. Um, we've got, that looks like an air intake there, and you've got the air intakes to go underneath the, um, the engines there. It's quite early this. But, um, you can see by what's left on the sprues that I'm sort of well into this one. It's something I really must get my teeth into and finish because it is such a beautiful model. Um, you can see on here we have some Bombay doors by the look of it. And you can see the detail on them. When you look at this in the Revell kit, the, the 220 bit comes becomes obvious. But if you ain't got 220 quid, then this might be all you can get. There's a door there, access door. That's probably the one that goes on the spine at the back. The dinghy door and then we've got the interior of the Bombay doors and you can see we have very very small some very very tiny ejector pin marks now what I've what I've noticed with this kit I remember when it first came out which is when I bought mine Phil Floyd did a review of it that was long before I was doing videos and he commented about how it was covered in ejector pin marks and if you remember he gave it a hard time um, but then realized afterwards when he actually built it that those ejector pin marks they all get covered up they look like they're going to be exposed, but then you find that when you start to build the model, there's little panels and plates that go over everything. So, um, very interesting. Um, here's another sprue here. You can see we've got some seat detail. There's a seat back with a cockpit there, which is beautifully moulded. We've got all our radio gear and everything. 
which again is all nicely done. Some lovely careful painting, it'll all look beautiful. You've got some lovely detail on those control parts. But uh, all in all, you can see the detail that's going into this cockpit is immense. As I say, I've got the big art set, a big head set for this as well, which I believe is no longer available. Um, so yeah, that'll look uh, that'll look pretty good if I use it. We have some uh, bomb pylons there for the wings. Here you can see the gun tracks I was talking about. As you can see on there, you've got the gun tracks, but there is no detail of any um, bullets or anything in there. So that's a bit of a shame. Uh, but somebody came along, I think it was Barracuda came along and uh, gave us gun tracks with the bullets in there. We've got the ladder there to go in. All very, very nicely done. Beautifully detailed. And you could build a really beautiful mosquito out of this, out of the box. Here we've got a sprue which is more complete, pretty much complete. Two of these. Obviously we've got our paddle blades and our normal, normal blades there for our props. We've got some gear doors there and you can see the absolutely gorgeous detail on them. On the interior, beautiful spinners there with all the lovely little rivet detail on them. Exterior side of the doors, very, very thinly moulded. You can almost see through them. Absolutely gorgeous. And then we've got our um, elevators there. So obviously it is correct to have them like that. So yeah, beautifully, beautifully done. You've got the spinner there. Sorry, not the spinner, the hub. Not a lot of detail there. I was expecting to see some more bulk detail or something on there, but uh, not to worry. There's the backs of the spinners there. So yeah, all in all, beautiful. And you get in, you get in four spinners. I'm not sure if they're identical. They must be different. They must have a slightly different profile on them for the different versions that are in the box. So that's that one. Uh, we've got our, that's our wing tanks there, our drop tanks or wing tanks. For certain versions you've got two exhaust shrouds there as well and then here i showed you the clear sprue this is the the gray sprue for the engine covers so they not only give you it in clear they give you it in gray as well which is really nice again they've got this wonderfully thin injection molding to get the nice uh, doors here we have the here we have the nose cover there for going over the guns and then here we have the the belly part there where the cannons are going to come through Close bomb bay doors here, and then here's more open bomb bay door sections there. Um, here's all the canopy framing. You can see how beautifully finely moulded that is. Absolutely gorgeous. There's some detail there for the inside the bomb bay doors, I think. It all just... It's just tammy, isn't it? It's just, you know, it's just pretty much the best. But... As we say the whole point of this video this comes at a price and then here we've got some figures and you can see again these are so much nicer than the Ravel ones you see the detail on them with all their straps and everything so we've got standing figures there we've got seated there got seated there there should be one with his leg up on the um, leg up on the ladder I'm not sure where that one is maybe that is that one his legs up on the ladder but very, very nicely done. Again, you've got the anti-shimmy wheel there, but far better detailed. And then we've got the um, the rudder there, but this one's a lot different on the detailing than the uh, than the Ravel kit. And then we've got our fin there. So all very, very nicely done indeed. Flash-free, ejector pin marks in places you're not going to see them. And some of the crispest moulding you'll ever see. And then this is pretty much it. So here's another sprue with exhaust. Oh, this is what we saw first of all, didn't it? You've seen that one already. So it's just a mirror of that sprue. It's not a mirror of it, it's exactly the same. As you can see aftermarket, I've got the, um, this is the beautiful Red Fox instrument panel set. So you can see it's all in there. I've reviewed this separately. And you've got all your radio faces on there as well. So you've got your 1155, 1154 and your G. So, uh, all very nicely done so you can use your Edwards on this on your other stuff I bought these um, from master pito tube and armament set so you can see we've got the pito tube up there and then here we've got all the um, the cannons and the gun barrels and everything with the cooling jackets which are very very nice indeed and we've all seen lots of these before so really really nice 
Here I've got the bombs I've built up. Remember, I always look in the instructions, look at halves I can put together and build up. So you can see there we've got a little screwdriver and we've got some bits of pipes and pieces in there that I've painted up already. So uh, that's that. Uh, here we have the grey uh, um, belly, different belly um, covers for the engine. Here we have our clear parts. So there's our um, beautiful clear canopy there. We can compare this one to the Revell kit. And you can see on there, absolutely crystal clear. No distortion whatsoever. Really, really nice. And a lot nicer on the detail side of things as well. And then here we've got some more clear panels for this, that and the other. We've got our instrument panels there. As I say, we've got reverse decals to go in there. So you've got some mesh grills there depicted with clear parts. You just dry brush those or give them an oil wash and they'll look like a mesh. So there we go. That's clear parts. That's for the sides of the uh, canopy, isn't it? Yes. That's your doors going in the sides of the canopy there. So we will put these away so they don't get scratched. Bear with me for a second or two. So that's those. Oh, there we go. There's the tops. I've removed them for some reason. I don't know why. You can see this beautiful thin moulding that Tamiya do so you can get the engine as big as possible so you don't have to downsize it. Uh, there's a correction sheet there. You've got some poly caps. Here are some bits. These are the um, the actual shoots for the ammunition and you can see on here they've actually included the bullets in there. They've done the same for the cannons. So these are the resin replacements from uh, Barracuda, Barracuda Cast BR32265. Thoroughly recommend them. If you're going to have your gun bays exposed, you need these. Otherwise, it's just going to look very, very plain. Typical um, Tamiya stainless photo etch. Uh, this is what I use the seatbelt for the Hurricane that you saw, you've seen me doing. So very, very nice indeed. Proves that you can use those if you anneal them. They do go very, very nice indeed. So that's that bit there. There's a bag of bits here which are unused in the kit. So uh, that's what I normally do with Tamiya kits is get the bits off the sprues and then you can bin the sprues when you don't need those parts anymore. We have the main fuselage halves here and you can see I've added some detail in there and I've painted them in XF71 which is wrong. I will now light them up and do them a lighter green. So I shall stand corrected on that. And then we have the Fuse large halves going together and obviously a lovely taped joint there. Beautiful car, beautiful aircraft. Will look absolutely gorgeous built. We have here some panels, bits and pieces. That's the back of the uh, one of the engine covers, isn't it? And there's a radiator cover there by the look of it. Some little bits and pieces here. Whatever they are. Some lovely detail on them. Here we have the tailplane built up, which looks... <clears throat> Very nice indeed. Again, no real surface detail on it because it's wood. So, very, very nice. And finally, oh, we have this box of bits here, <clears throat> which again I've painted XF71, I can see. So we've got here, here is the, this is the panel that goes in behind the, the pilot. We've got some bombs in there. This is the main cockpit floor. Again, I've started some assembly and again painted at XF71, giving it a gloss coat ready for a wash. I did this years ago. And there we've got the rudder pedals assembled, ready for the instrument panel to, to go on. And then here we have bomb racks. You can see I've added the Edward photo edge onto them, or is that the Tamiya stainless steel? I'm not sure what that is. And then we've got flaps here built up. Pilot seat there, as you can see, it's looking lovely. Again, ejector pin marks all over that, but it's going to get covered with the cushion on the back. And then we've got the uh, oxygen bottle down there, or the fire extinguisher. And we've got some flares down there. And as you can see, as I've always done, I do now as I've always done, build up as much as you can and then do the detail painting afterwards. And there we've got a, a, a door there with a, with a clear window in it, you can see. So we've got, we've got a bulkhead there. We've got a machine gun there with a panel in the top of it so that's obviously Eddard because it's silver so I'm guessing this on here must be photo etched from the actual kit because it's uh, silver and uh, 
yeah lots and lots of little bits and pieces and there's the nose there that the guns are going to stick through you can see even that's detailed on the inside so very very nicely done indeed very very nice you can see there there's something or other i don't know what that is but it's something or other so there we go and there's the there's an ammo box there by the look of it a, bo well, a set of four ammo boxes and i've added the edward photo etched to the top there so all in all as you can see it doesn't need a hell of a lot of more work to get it finished because there isn't much left to do so i'm going to put that cover back on there and then show you this is where we are with it so this is the this is the uh, wing section obviously built up i started with the wing so as not to get burnt out and then got burnt out <laughs> um you can see there's the wing section there the guns these are the guns and you can see in there they've got the, the ammunition in them these are the, the resin ones to replace the uh, kit ones and then we've got um the master barrels to go on as well you can see there we've got all the uh, the air tubes to um to keep the guns warm keep the cannons warm should i say this obviously needs a dull coat because i've got it all glossy but uh, as i said i did this many years ago and when i was still sort of learning so uh, you can see it's not very good in there i need to repaint that really but uh, and you can see down in here i've used the um the edward buckles with the straps holding the fuel tanks in again i've got that glossy um we've got the white in there we've got the green round here and these are the um, HGW dry transfers for the placards on there. And then you can see those beautiful wheels and tyres which Tammy have made out of multi-pieces. You can see the undercarriage there which is gorgeous. Absolutely gorgeous with the stencil on the back there. And then looking up in the wheel bays. There's some beautiful detail up in those wheel bays if I can get the light over it. See up in there there's some lovely detail and then we've got the engines which are very very nice indeed a lot of people get the edward engine sets i don't know why i don't know why i've painted these red brown not a clue um maybe it tells you to in the instructions we've got all the copper piping there and uh, you can see all the detail in here around the wing leading edge <clears throat> which is exposed when you take the engine covers off but uh yeah very very nicely done indeed you can see the magnets in there that are going to hold those radiator covers on. And you can see in there you've got the photo action radiators, which are beautiful. So and you've got the linkage going across there that you're going to see inside the cockpit. So yeah, this all needs masking up and that green needs to be changed. It's too dark. It's fine in here, but not in the cockpit. So there we are. In fact, it would be fine under there, wouldn't it? So I just do that on the top. But there we go. We've got ailerons that move. All very nicely done. They still come out. Uh, I'm not sure if they should move or not. They probably shouldn't. Some means they might be broken or something on there. But um, all in all, you can see it's a really nice size model, the, the 132nd Mosquito, because, you know, it's obviously a lot smaller than Lancaster, but it's a little bit bigger than your Spitfires and your Hurricanes and stuff. So there we go, guys. So that has been a quick review of these two kits. Well, not so quick. But I just wanted to, to sort of look at it because I've had this for years and obviously just bought the Ravel one because Paul Plastic Monkey got one and I thought I'd get one to see what it was like. And um, I'm glad I did because uh, you, know, you can make your own mind up. Let me know in the comments what you think. But, um, you know, £220 for this one, 30 quid for the other one. Do you know what I mean? What are you going to do? What Which one would you go for? Um, I'm glad I've got both. If I bought the Ravel one, I would probably be quite disappointed and get this one at the end of the day. But um, it certainly wasn't 220 quid when I bought this one. It was more like 120 quid. I'm just going to look on the box. I'm not sure what date this is. Because uh, I bought this as soon as it was released. 2015. So I've had this for eight years now. So uh, that's, what my, that's what my modelling was like eight years ago. So I think we can see I've come on a bit from that. So I think I need to get some uh, get some improvements done on this and get this bloody thing finished off. But I probably won't do a video build before you ask because uh, I don't video build everything. So uh, there we go. Thanks for watching, guys. I will see you all soon with some more action. Um, I've got another Spitfire build be up, 
uploading as we speak so you can have a look at that one and I'll see you all soon for something else but as I say let me know in the comments below which one would you buy Revel, Tamiya or both or for some unknown reason you go and get the HK one which is why <laughs> thanks for watching bye for now